Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, coming at you with another paid request. Uh, this is the second, uh, well, this is the, we're still on the first, but uh, this is the first of a trilogy that we are doing today, or the next couple few days here. Uh, the Ryan Trilogy, as I'm calling it, because I got three paid requests, each from a person named Ryan. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up Ryan Yang, his paid request today. The other film that he wanted me to talk about is called Robot Dreams, which is an animated film that came out last year that I had not heard of. And actually, it was nominated for the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. So... Again, you guys know how I feel about the Oscars, but it's still cool. Animated film, getting nominated, that's still pretty cool. I can't really get mad at that. Um, but this was this was really cool. This was a really cool movie. Really love the animation style in this, uh, along with kind of everything else. Uh, but we will jump into that in a second here. But first, as usual, you know what's coming. You guys probably know it better than me at this point. If anyone else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. I don't care where YouTube decides to put it. They could stick it in their box for all I care. Um, but in this dojo, it will always be at the bottom. Excuse me. Um, so excited I can't get the words out. But down below in the description box... There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just the movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if anybody is interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, for those of you that have sent them in before thank you i greatly appreciate it it means you guys actually care about what i say and do here on the channel you want to see me try some different things it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody you guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel i keep making them and at the end of the day everybody goes home happy just like they used to say at blockbuster so thank you um, so yeah, Robot Dreams. Now, this movie just got released here in the States. It came out in May. So I don't, again, I know it was nominated for an Oscar. I guess, I, I don't know how it works, but I guess it was submitted to them to be considered. I don't know, again, how it works now. <clears throat> but I do find it odd that the movie only now came out in the States. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, but it was nominated for Oscar for 2023. So, I don't understand how, again, the movie was not out in America. The Academy Awards is an American film thing, or award show, I don't know, who cares. But anyway, I guess it really doesn't matter. But it's still cool that this was nominated. Did it win? No. But it's still cool that it was put in that category. It's actually based on a comic book, which I didn't know that either. I thought that was interesting as well. Did not, of course, I just discovered that, so clearly I have not read the comic. But it's still cool. Um, the Let's just go ahead. Yeah, the plot of the film, first of all, the film has no dialogue, which I thought was really interesting. I thought that was really cool. Now, there is, excuse me, um, I don't know what the fuck is going on, um, where was I? Now, like, characters scream, and they make noises, and they laugh, and that kind of thing, but there's no actual dialogue in the film, but there is a lot of music, one piece of music in particular, which we'll jump more into that in a minute here, but I, I thought it was cool that there was no dialogue in the film, that was something different, but... The plot of the film is it takes place in New York City in 1984. 
There are no humans in the film. All the characters are animals. I thought that was really cool as well. And there's robots. There's this dog. Uh, he has kind of a pretty sheltered, lonely life, and he orders a robot. Builds the robot, puts it together. Him and the robot become friends. They start to bond over the summer, and particularly the Earth, Wind, and Fire song, September, which is the main piece of music that is played throughout the film, but there is other music as well. And one day, they go to the beach, the robot gets wet, and he gets stuck in the sand. Unfortunately, the dog has to abandon him. He goes back the next day. He's not allowed to be on there. Like, they threaten to arrest him. And the beach is closed until next June 1st. So the, the robot has to stay there. And the robot starts to imagine what is going on, what the dog is doing, how can he escape, where can he go, as the seasons change and time goes on. The dog starts to try to make new friends it doesn't really work so he ends up buying another robot and starts to bond with that meanwhile the first robot is found by a monkey who is just out there with his metal detector looking for stuff he takes the robot to the junkyard this raccoon finds the robot takes all the parts turns him into a boom box and then they start to bond the robot sees the dog he wants to get back with him and find him and everything but he decides that because he sees him with this other robot his other friend just to kind of go his separate ways because he was able to find a friend the first robot has another friend and they go on and that's basically the plot of the film um it's not anything we haven't seen before whether it's in animation or live action but uh the movie did separate itself from the other stuff, which was cool, because again, I love the fact that there was no dialogue, and I was a little uh, taken back by that, because I was watching the movie, and I noticed that the credits were in Spanish, and I'm like, oh, is this a foreign film? So I went and looked for subtitles in the video file, because, you know, I found it elsewhere. There were no subtitles. I'm like, oh, how am I going to be able to understand? So I went online and found out, oh, there is no dialogue. I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. Not a problem. So I liked that. I liked that there was no dialogue in the film. I thought that was cool. It was something different. It was something unique. It's a little more original than just having people talk their asses off for the entirety of the film and get annoying and everything. So I was like, okay, cool. I love the fact that there's no humans. I like how all the characters, except the two robots, are animals. I thought, I'm like, okay, I, I can dig this. I can get behind this. This is pretty cool. This is something different and unique and original. I love the use of music, especially Earth, Wind, and Fire, September, which is a great song, as we all know. I've seen them do it live, which is cool. That was kind of the main song. But there was other pieces of music and, and parts of songs that they used in here, which I liked. I really, really dig the animation style. I thought it looked really nice. It was really clean. It was all bright and colorful. And, you know, it was it really catches your eye, which is nice because most of the stuff that comes out now, animation-wise, is, is all CG. So I like that they went for a little more traditional approach with this because I don't understand why we can't have the best of both worlds today. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. I don't understand why we can't have uh, 2D and 3D. We can have the, the CG movies, and then we can have some traditionally hand-drawn animated films or a blend of both. Why, why can't we have a little bit of everything in today's, today's world? We've, we've come that far in technology and film and and everything. Why Why can't we have... Again, like a buffet, a little bit of everything. A little 2D, a little 3D, maybe a blend, maybe blending it in with live action, you know, like Roger Rabbit or Space Jam. You know, why can't we have a little bit of that? I don't know. But this is nice. I like when we get more traditional animated stuff, traditionally hand-drawn or, you know, now it's all digital ink and paint is what they call it. You just do it on a computer, it's the same thing. 
I like when we get those movies thrown in the mix here because it's nice when you get something different, something else. When you have 15 animated movies that come out within a given year, give or take, and they're all CG, it's like, okay, this is an oddity. Um, I liked, you know, the friendship between the characters, given the fact that there's no dialogue. I thought it was well done. I thought it was cool. It was unique. I like the other, you know, when Dog tries to make friends, like there's a scene where he imagines, it's the winter, and he imagines becoming friends with the snowman. He builds the snowman, he gives him clothes, gives him a, a carrot nose and a button, like Frosty. They go bowling together. I thought that was cool and different, and the snowman's drinking like a, a slushy, and he turns into the color. I'm like, okay, I this is really cool. This is unique. This is something different. And then he wakes up and it found out it was a nightmare. Um, there's a scene when he goes skiing and, and these other characters make fun of him and he's trying to outdo him and then he gets hurt. Then he gets upset about it. The robot's trying to figure out ways to escape. Like there's a, a dream scene that he has where, well, I guess it's a he. Uh, the robot has, where I really liked it, they, they framed the shot like, the beach with the snow on it's a painting and the robot like gets out from the bottom and then he gets he moves over to the side and he can't get out so he flips the painting around and it's the land of oz and he goes in and he's dancing with these flowers and the flowers make the pattern of the dog which i thought was cool so there was some really unique stuff in this movie um you know again i like the monkey character with the gold tooth looking for the metal and then he finds the robot i like the raccoon making a, a boom box out of the robot that that's again this is something different and original and getting creative with it i love that it took place in the 80s it definitely felt like that there's like a break dancing animal gang in the movie um there's like video stores and and such there's they're watching the wizard of oz and they rented the video from kim's video which Anybody that's my age or older uh, from New York City would know that Kim's Video was a very famous video store for many, many years. I believe that they've just recently reopened it. And they had, and I hate to use this word because everybody uses it, but they had literally anything that you can think of in that video store. So I like the little references to that. Um, you know, I like them all the the different buildings and the signs like on the boardwalk like frozen custard and and the pizza place and and that was all very well done they go to yankee stadium there's a scene where it's in yankee stadium and I like i i was really getting into this movie this was something very refreshing to me this was very solid i see why um you know they wanted it in that contention for for best animated feature um, you know, it, it makes sense to me. I do feel that the movie was a little bit long. I don't think it needed to be 98 minutes. There could have been stuff tightened up or, or trimmed or cut out. Uh, you know, again, with these, with these animated films, it just depends. You know, a lot of them run about an hour, hour 15, hour 20, maybe an hour and a half. But when they're getting past that, sometimes it's just... A little too much and yeah in my opinion they could have trimmed some things up they could have shortened some things here and there but that's just how I look at it that's just how I feel about it um, let me see if this is out physically yet because like I said it came out in uh, in May There's one on eBay. I guess it's a bootleg. Yeah, there's some other ones. They look like bootlegs to me. Let me see. If, let me look at Blu-ray.com quickly. Come on. No. Um, on Blu-ray.com, there is no Blu-ray releases. 
So I guess, the, like I said, I did see one on eBay. I guess uh, it's just a bootleg for now. Because it is, I guess it's on some streaming services. Yeah, so May 31st it was out, and I'm seeing, yeah, it just it looks like it's bootlegs at, at this point. So I'll just wait, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But this is a movie, definitely a movie I would like to watch again. This is a movie that I would pick up to have in my collection. Let me see if, uh, let me look at the Wikipedia page. Yeah, it made 4.6 million. Um, the budget was it's, it says the budget was five euros, so it's about the same here. But yeah, they they screened it at film festivals. They screened it at Cannes Film Festival last year, and then it came out in Spain in December, France in December, the UK and Ireland in March. And it was released May 31st of this year. A company called Neon picked it up. Which they okay, yeah, they released Parasite, which won an Oscar. Uh, they released Ferrari, which came out last year, the Michael Mann film. Uh, I Tanya, which was the movie with Margot Robbie. Yeah, where she played uh, Tanya Harding. Still haven't seen it. Let me see if I can see some of the other films. Most of these movies I don't even know. So I guess they're like an art. I guess they're an art house company. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, that's if that's what you fancy, that's cool. But I did, I did like this movie. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what they have to offer. Hopefully, again, it'll get a, a blue official Blu-ray release soon here, because again, the the ones that I saw online are just bootlegs. But no, support the official releases. Support the filmmakers. But I can wait. I'm not, again, I'm not in a rush. I'm sure it'll be out soon here. But I again, I really like this. This and the previous movie that Ryan Yang had me review, Ruthless People, they were nice. They were refreshing. It's always good when you get to discover uh, a, a, a good movie and, and something that may have not come up on, a radar, on, on anybody's radar for that matter. But that's why I like doing this because... You know, you guys get to recommend things to me. I get to check it out, and you know, then I get to enjoy it, and then I get to recommend it to other people, which is the whole point of this. But this was a good movie. I really liked it. Thought it was very solid, very well done, and uh, like I said, hopefully soon it'll get some kind of physical release, and I will enjoy it for years and years to come. So there you go. But anyway. I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Robot Dreams. Next up, Ryan number two. <laughs> um, we're gonna get into a couple more, a uh, couple more animated films, some more uh, Batman animated films. Got that's we're gonna. I cannot talk. That's what we're gonna take care of next, and uh, we're gonna keep it rolling. We're gonna keep having fun because that's what we do. So we'll talk soon. Take care.